afternoon, Victor Town residents. Uh, it's Thursday, the 9th of April. Certainly, we appreciate you tuning in to us last Thursday, and we look forward to, uh, again, trying to educate you and uh, certainly bring you the latest updates here from the town of Victor. So, again, today, a little uh, different format. Uh, as you can see, the uh, supervisor is standing at the podium. We are certainly trying to also demonstrate social distancing here at Town Hall. So uh, today, like we had last week, we had four speakers. We have four speakers again today. I'm going to open this up. I will also close the program as well. In addition, I will be in the second, uh, my first introduction will be to the Chief of Operations for the Farmington Victor Ambulance, Mr. Mike Palala. And uh, then uh, we have our Mayor, Mr. Gary Haddon, will be our third speaker. And then uh, certainly um, by popular demand, last week, uh, I mentioned, as you'll recall, a number of occasions we talked about our uh, transfer station, our bucket program. So we have asked uh, Casey Page to join us today to give an overview for you, the town residents, as well. So let me uh, go back to uh, last week, a couple comments I made last week regarding the CEMP, which is the Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan that the town and village actually uh, adopted over a decade ago. And uh, this is... Uh, Management plan is in place for several decades in order to maintain the continuity of government and operations during disaster situations. In response to this state and our federal declaration of emergency, the plan was activated and instituted under the Emergency Operations Center, which uh, is mobile, but also if we were in different circumstances, would be on the second floor of town hall. The goal is to maintain a minimum level of service to the community while complying with executive order and maintaining safety for our town employees. The EOC is focused on communication and coordination amongst the various first responding agencies. Uh, I want to provide a county update because I know that was a lot of the questions brought from you, the public, last time. So an update from the county health director as of uh, end of business yesterday. The uh, county has identified a cluster situation within the within Ontario Center, which is located in Hopewell. This is the former county nursing home. Unfortunately, uh, this is a vast majority of our aging population reside there. Thompson Hospital and the State Department of Health are offering assistance, training, and equipment to the staff. But I want to give you the figures as of last evening. As of last evening, we had 48 confirmed cases. Four were actually new yesterday. We have uh, or eight individuals hospitalized, which is an increase. We have been uh, uh, throughout this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we have been about four to five individuals hospitalized. So we have seen an increase to eight. We have uh, negative testing, 542 individuals, and we have uh, quarantine, uh, isolation, 95 mandated. We have 24 individuals that are totally recovered. And I guess uh, if there is a, uh, on wood, no fatalities here in Ontario County. And if you have any questions, feel free. Ontario County's Health Department is area code 585-396-4343. Again, 396-4343. Big question that has uh, arisen in the public, and uh, whether it's a uh, local media or national media, is the utilization of masks. So the State Department of Health is suggesting that you wear masks in public areas and I'll use an example of the grocery stores. And these should be, masks should be either homemade ones or the ones you can find in a store like a Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, stores of that uh, level. No one should be wearing the N95 masks. No one in the public should be wearing the N95 masks. These are reserved for individuals in the health field or first responders. Wearing a mask does not prevent you from having to abide to social distancing. It is to prevent a situation when somebody nearby may uh, sneeze and uh, it's to protect you that way. Social distancing reminder for all town residents in our parks, playgrounds, and trails. We talked about it extensively last time. Even on our trails, social distancing. If you're with a family member, we can see where you can be grouped. Uh, someone outside your family, your circle of friends, loved ones, whatever, social distancing. In our uh, playgrounds, you've seen they've all been taped off. That is for the protection of your children, your family, and the residents of this town. 
In addition, please adhere to park signage related to social distancing, closing of playgrounds, the courts, the basketball courts, the lodges, and the picnic shelters. Uh, we are strongly discouraging people from with large groups of friends and teammates and students from getting together to play pickup games. Dryer Road Park, I'll use an, for an example. Unfortunately, even though the box lacrosse rink has been closed and locked for three weeks now, we've had a large group of boys climbing the 10 foot high chain link fence, throwing a six by six foot goal over the top and having a shoot around. The town's park, and sta park staff have asked the young men to leave only to come back and find them there again. Again, reminder, large groups are not per permitted in, in this area. And again, town facilities, uh, we are, they're open by appointment only. Uh, highway department remains active, though they are on a reduced uh, staffing. The town board and planning board in the future weeks, we plan on having our <clears throat> meetings. Uh, we will be on uh, the use of WebEx and uh, the uh, YouTube as well. So please uh, sign up for that. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Mike Carlotto of the Armington Victor Ambulance Corps. Thank you, Supervisor Mary. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mike Carlotta, and I'm the Chief of Operations of Victor Farmington Ambulance. I wanted to take this opportunity to speak to all of you about Victor Farmington Ambulance and our operations during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. I want to assure all of you that Victor Farmington Ambulance has taken every measure to ensure that we are ready to assist you to our best abilities during this pandemic. We are 100% staffed and are ready to respond to all emergencies. We have outfitted our crews with the necessary personal protective equipment, or PPE, to ensure the safety of not only our crews, but to our residents as well. I wanted to take this opportunity to inform you about some of our processes when responding to emergencies during this pandemic. Our crews will be wearing N95 masks, safety goggles, and gloves on all emergency calls. They will be wearing full encapsulating PPE, which includes Tyvek suits and, and booties, on any respiratory distress call or any suspected or confirmed COVID-19 patients. If the need arises for you to call 911, we would ask that you or anyone in your household that has been in contact with anyone who has been sick or has a fever, body aches, and a persistent cough, we ask that you inform the 911 dispatcher of this so that our crews can wear the proper personal protective equipment. We would also ask that if the patient is able to wait outside for the ambulance, that they do so. If waiting outside is not possible, our crews will stop at the front door and do an assessment on the patient's condition. During this pandemic, many hospitals, including FF Thompson Hospital, have enacted a no visitor policy. Victor Farmington Ambulance has temporarily enacted a policy that no riders or family members are permitted to accompany a patient on the ambulance with the sole exceptions of a parent in the case of a child and a translator for a critically ill patient. Victor Farmington has also temporarily closed our base to all visitors and suspended all community classes and our loan closet program. We know these are important resources and we assure you that these services will be fully restored once the pandemic is over. If you have any further questions about our operations during this pandemic, I strongly encourage you to email us at info at victorfarmingtonambulance.org. That's info at victorfarmingtonambulance.org. In closing, I want to thank each and every one of you for your support during these difficult times. And I want to ensure you that we adhere for our, our community and will continue to provide the best patient care to our residents. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the village mayor, Mr. Gary Hatton. Thank you, Mike. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. So much of what I have to say is gonna be to reiterate what I said at the last Facebook uh, meeting that we had. I wanna reinforce what our situation is in the village. Village Hall remains closed to the public till further notice. Uh, we have one employee there from Monday through Friday 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. 
Uh, they will be taking your phone calls if necessary and carrying out whatever essential business uh, is necessary at Village Hall. The phone number there I would like to uh, give out again is 585-924-3311. Uh, we also have a mailbox outside the front door for your water and sewer bills, which were just mailed out this week. We would appreciate your bill payments there, or you can mail them in. And if you have any issues uh, with paying, please call Village Hall. Uh, I also want to make sure I don't forget to tell you that if Village Hall is closed and there is an emergency, you can call Village Hall and when you access the number, there will be emergency numbers for you to reach on an after hours basis. Uh, regarding our Department of Public Works, we're still staffed at 50%. We have a crew on 50% and then we rotate it um, every few days. They will be performing our regular garbage and recycling pick up as normally scheduled on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, we are encouraging social distancing for our employees and we encourage it for village residents as well, along with reiterating what Supervisor Marin said about wearing a mask in public, especially when you're in a public place where there'll be lots of other people. Um, I also want to mention large trash pickup that happens in the spring is underway and we will continue that for the last two Mondays in April. Uh, pre please refer to the village calendar, page 10, for your area and information and dates. Also during this time we have brush and yard waste pickup and that will occur now through November as scheduled and again you can refer to the village calendar, page 12, for your area and information and dates. And as a result of last fall's late leaf drop by the trees, we still have a lot of leaves around and the village is now bringing the leafer back out and picking up leaves. We would encourage you to put them at the curb, not in the street or the gutter, please. Uh, and please don't mix sticks and other yard debris with the leaves as the leafer would get clogged. They will be by to pick up your leaves. If, if you've, I want to also mention if you've misplaced your calendar, your village calendar, uh, you can access that on the victornewyork.org website. Click on the village portion and you'll be able to access it. And then finally, I want to mention that as an FYI, RG&E, if you've driven through the village, you may have already seen some things going on. RG&E will be installing and replacing gas mains along a portion of West Main Street from the main intersection at Moore Avenue to West Main to School Street and to Adams Street. So if you encounter RG&E working, please be courteous and mindful that this is necessary construction and be patient with them. Thank you. Um, that's all I have at this time and I will introduce Casey Hines from uh, the Recycling Center. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Gary. Um, my name is Casey Page, and I'm the Highway Transfer Station Office Manager and the Waste Diversion Project Coordinator. Um, I just wanted to give everyone an update on changes to the transfer station in response to the COVID-19 situation. Um, the transfer station is deemed essential and is operating under normal spring summer hours. Those hours are Monday, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., Wednesday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., and Saturday, 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, we ask that you please remain in your vehicles with your windows up. Um, you can show the attendants your permit through the glass. Um, the Transfer Station Highway Office is closed to the public, but we are there Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30. Um, and when one of us isn't there, the other is working remotely. So we are taking calls. 
So feel free to call our office, 585-742-5094. Um, um, also, you can email me at cpage at town victor ny.us. Um, the brush area is now open for our transfer station permit holders. That is open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 3.30, with the exception of Wednesday, um, when we're open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Residents who are participating participating in the bucket exchange program. Um, we did stop that for um, a little bit, a couple weeks, um, just to make sure that Impact Earth was disinfecting the buckets um, appropriately to CDC guidelines. And they have added an extra step in their disinfecting process and are currently using all their proper um, personal protective um, equipment when they're cleaning, emptying, and delivering the buckets. So we felt comfortable restarting that program um, as of April 2nd. Um, if you have information, or if you need information on what their cleaning protocols are, um, go to their website. Uh, it's impactearthroc, all one word, dot com. Uh, the town, we, the town of Victor, have made some changes to our process for the buckets, um, we are no longer weighing those buckets. They can be placed in the shed outside. Um, the full buckets go to the left. The cleaner buckets are on the right. Um, we ask that you please adhere to the social distancing guidelines and one person at a time at the shed. Um, and then I would just recommend washing your hands or using some type of alcohol-based sanitizer after you get your clean bucket. Uh, dumping large trash or construction materials for our residents who have a punch card. We decided that we would take this um, back on but only by appointment. So um, as of this week, if you have any large trash or um, large items you need to get rid of, we ask that you call the office for an appointment. Our appointments are Monday, 7.30 to 10.30 a.m., Wednesday, 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., and no Saturday drop-offs at this time. Um, any transfer station users who wish to purchase a punch card, you can do so um, by filling out an application and mailing a check for $100 payable to the town of Victor, 260 Rockson Road, Building B, uh, Victor, New York, 14564, or you can place it in our Dropbox, um, and that's on the Building B office door. We process and mail out those punch cards within one to two business days. Um, we also are taking renewals um, at the office if you put them in the Dropbox. Again, we will process and mail them out within one to two business days. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, please contact me at the office or email me. Um, and the, any updates are found on the Town of Victor website. Thank you. And Casey, thank you very much for that uh, valuable update uh, to our uh, residents here. A uh, couple uh, closing comments about uh, some things going on and then uh, a couple appeals to you, the residents here. Uh, first and foremost, we have a town dedicated website page dedicated 100% uh, to COVID-19. In addition, there is an opportunity for, uh, we have a separate email address as well, uh, uppercase T-O-V COVID at uh, lowercase town dash or hyphen victor hyphen ny uh, dot us. So please uh, submit your questions to you to us. A number of uh, requests we've received this week. What's essential, non-essential businesses, and the enforcement process. So uh, we are going to add this to the town's web page as well, uh, or Facebook page. Please uh, contact the New York State Pause Enforcement Task Force for complaints regarding operations of non-essential businesses or gatherings. 
That number is 833-789-0470, and this hotline accepts calls 24-7. Now, our county has a, uh, it's three individuals. It's our code enforcement officer for the county, our county attorney, and our sheriff's department as well. When complaints come in from various municipalities, they in turn notify the jurisdiction where that uh, complaint came in, and we would be in this situation, we would be dispatching either a village code enforcement officer or a town code enforcement officer. A uh, number of questions have arisen regarding landscapers uh, as one, car washes, uh, and nail salons, things of that nature. Uh, unfortunately, essential businesses only. Landscaping companies, uh, if they follow good practices with one individual in a car uh, or a truck pulling up to your uh, house and resuming work, that's from what our understanding that is allowed uh, coming up with three or four individuals in the same vehicle you don't want them on your property uh, quite honestly so uh, again and as far as uh, we get complaints about uh, from neighborhoods uh, there's uh, 10 or 15 boys in, the, in somebody's yard playing we have to hope that common sense prevails in those situations and if those parents or those neighbors certainly have that opportunity to have that frank conversation with individuals uh, again relying on our office to, uh, um, to to investigate them. By the time we get out there, some many times those situations have uh, dispersed themselves. So I have a couple, uh, I, I certainly have an appeal to you. In these trying times, there's also a portion of our population that are truly suffering. Many, many people are. But feeding people in need, the Farmington Victor Food Cupboard has modified their hours and are still holding two emergency food distributions per week. One on Sundays and one on Wednesdays from two to five. They are seeing currently 55 to 70 families. Additionally, they have 10 satellite locations where emergency food boxes are located mostly at churches. Uh, when the food cupboard receives a call from a family near these satellites, they contact the person at that location and they put a box out for that family to uh, pick up. There's no contact in those situations. In addition, they've implemented a delivery system for those individuals that feel unsafe leaving their homes and that strategy, strategy seems to be uh, working real well. Currently they have about 26 families or senior citizens that are receiving uh, deliveries. In addition, food link, uh, food link distributions will occur next week with about 600 boxes. Food boxes will be available. Uh, the Director of Office of the Aging at this time said there are about 70 individuals already signed up. Pre-registration will be limited to 285 household or individuals in the Canandaigua area and 285 registrants in the Geneva area. Please help Ontario County get this message out to the public. So we need you. We're taking this time as well to do that. Uh, in addition, unfortunately, um, I'm, I'm, we will post this on our uh, website and Facebook as well, but unfortunately the Office of the Aging has, has is raised issues relating to scammers offering grants for home repairs. In addition, uh, we have people going out saying that they'll offer free testing at their house, uh, make sure you, you don't have the virus. Again, they're just trying to scam you. So we'll put all this information out there. Unfortunately, remember only that a physician or a trusted healthcare provider should assess your condition and approve requested requests for COVID-19 uh, testing. Um, this weekend is Easter weekend. We all know that and certainly uh, I'm asking that all of you uh, find different methods for celebrating this day and including our families while maintaining a safe environment for our loved ones as well. Very important. I have one, uh, two, one other request. I'm asking that you take this time to lift the spirits of others by connecting with one another when we need them the most. So New York State, uh, NYSAC, Association of County has instituted a new statewide campaign encouraging people to take five minutes each and every day to call a friend, family member, or even an acquaintance who may be alone and isolated during the current social distancing efforts. So with this being Easter weekend, I think it's more important than ever that I'm asking you, everyone, to please call someone you know, a family member we may not have spoken to for a while, or a senior citizen within our community. Let's help us all get through this very difficult and uncertain time. In addition, we anticipate doing this again next Thursday. Uh, that'll be the 16th at 12.30 p.m. It's our intention to continue to do this. Next week, we hope to have uh, maybe the uh, Fishers Fire Chief join us as well. 
And one final message from the town supervisor, please. We all have a right and a, and a part in doing this, Keep us our, keeping every single one of us safe. So thank you again, and we hope to see you again next Thursday.